Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Plant Fanatics. Today we're going to be talking about pawpaw trees, so stay tuned. Right here next to me, I have my pawpaw tree or Asamina triloba. This tree has been in the ground for about four years. It's well over six feet tall at this point. And something that's really interesting about pawpaws is that they are the largest fruit native to North America. The flowers on them are very interesting. They're like a deep maroon color. Um, They're actually pollinated by flies and beetles. And the flowers actually have a little bit of a stench to them, which um, you know is what it uses to attract its pollinators for this particular tree. It's not something where you're gonna plant them and you're gonna be walking in the garden and notice a smell, but I'm just telling you so that you know how the pollinators are attracted to this tree. Now, these trees are actually somewhat self-fertile, um, so it is possible to get a few fruit with only one variety of pawpaw. However, your chances of getting fruit set goes much higher if you have at least two varieties and three varieties is even better in order to ensure that you're gonna get fruit. Now, the fruit of the pawpaw actually reminds me quite a bit of a mango. It has a little bit of a mango shape, and oddly enough, it tastes like a mixture between a mango and a banana. Um, it's also known as the hillbilly banana, so it does have that banana flavor to it. However, it's, it has its own flavor. There's really no other fruit that's like it. It has kind of a custard texture to it. Um, so just a very different fruit and it's a very interesting fruit for you know you people who are looking for something a little different to have in the garden. In the wild these trees are going to be an understory tree. Um, they grow very well as an understory tree however they fruit better when you give them a full sun situation. When they're younger you're going to want to give it a little bit of shade just to start it off because that sun can burn the leaves um, and it can actually lead to death of the tree in the early years. However, after your first or second season, you should be able to give it full sun and it'll thrive after that. Um, they're a relatively small tree, uh, typically only getting somewhere around 15 to 20 feet tall, and you can keep it whatever size you'd like with pruning. The trees are gonna need to be about six feet tall before they're gonna start setting flowers. Um, this is actually the first year that we're gonna be getting fruit off of this particular tree. Um, and it has a lot of flowers. Something else that I've figured out through growing these trees is that even if you get hit with a late frost and some of those flowers fall off, I wouldn't worry too much about that because it will actually set more flowers on the tree. So it kind of flowers and then gives another burst of flowers a little bit later. Um, so it's one of those trees that can withstand the late frost, still give you fruit, um, now, if you have one of those freak situations where you're getting late frost after late frost after late frost, which can happen, you might not get fruit that year, but it's really gonna be that way with any fruit tree. Um, I've had years with apples that we didn't get apples because of late frost. So um, that's just something that can happen and you learn that as you garden more. But these are really great trees to have to the garden. Another thing that's very interesting about pawpaws is that they form patches. If you find a wild patch of pawpaws, you might find that they don't have a lot of fruit on them. And that's because, like I said, they're somewhat self-fertile. Um, so they create patches and there's not going to be a variation in the genotype, which means you're not going to get a lot of fruit set with just that one tree. Um, you can control the suckering and have just one tree instead of a patch by just cutting off the suckers as they come up and you'll just end up with a nice looking tree like this. Obviously, this tree will get a little bit bigger. Like I said, it's only about four years old, but it's a wonderful tree to have in the garden. If you guys have any more questions about this tree, leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you like the content, leave a like on the video, share with any of your friends who are interested in it, and check out the AmericanFigCompany.com where we sell all different types of fruiting plants, but we specialize in cold hardy, rare varieties of figs. Thanks so much for checking this video out, guys.